Cool. Um, yeah, no, it's 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 a pleasure to be here to be introducing this new project. I see a lot of familiar faces in in the audience. Um, it's an honor to, to to share this time with you, and thanks a lot for the invitation. So a little bit of context on this new protocol that we're building. You know, we're calling it uh, a container chain protocol, and we're, we'll get into what that actually means. But uh, some context for this project is, you know, um, so my name is Francisco. For those of you don't, who don't know me, I've spent the last couple of years uh, working on on growth, specifically in the Moonbeam ecosystem. So I've, I've gotten the opportunity to, to speak with a lot of teams throughout my time at Moonbeam. And more importantly, you know, we went through the process of deploying a parachain, right? And through that process, we learned that building application specific chains or L1s is really not a, a trivial process. Uh, so from those learnings, we, we kind of took that to heart and we realized that in order to accelerate adoption within the Polkadot ecosystem, you know, something had to be done to to make the developer experience a lot simpler, right? And to streamline that experience and abstract away a lot of the complexity associated with building on Polkadot. And this is what ultimately led to, to Tansi's creation. Um, Tansi is ultimately uh, is gonna be a parachain on Polkadot. And as a high level, you know, it's, it's an app chain infrastructure protocol that is gonna make it a lot easier for developers to deploy parachains and para threads uh, in the future on Polkadot. So yeah, we can, with that little bit of context, we can go ahead and get started. Um, I think somebody's controlling these, this deck for me, so. Uh, cool, so yeah, the, the premise of Tansi really centers itself around the, the, the fact that the app chain space has been growing significantly in the past couple of years. Um, and this audience knows that well, right? I think Cosmos and Polkadot have been the pioneers in this area. Um, the Cosmos SDK and Substrate have made it a lot easier to build chains in general. But what we find interesting, you know, is that there's a lot of new players entering the space in the past year or so. Um, there's Avalanche subnets, there's Polygon supernets, there's Binance subchain uh, sidechains, there's app specific rollups on mainnet. So for us, this is validation that, you know, the app chain thesis and narrative is going to continue to grow in the years to come. Um, so yeah, the, the main question is really why app chains, right? And I, I feel like I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here since this is a Polkadot native audience, but, um, and, and we had our own point of view, right? From having built Moonbeam, but in the process of kind of creating uh, the ideas for Tansy, you know, we, we wanted to either validate the own po the, the, the perspective that we had accrued on Moonbeam, but more importantly, you know, we, we wanted to kind of get the, the perspective of other builders b building different use cases across different ecosystems. So we did go out and speak to some of the parachains in the ecosystem, but, and also we spoke to a lot of teams across like Cosmos and AVAX subnets. And after having dozens of conversations, you know, um, there's like recurring patterns that start to emerge. Um, and we kind of boiled it down to these main three reasons, which I'm not going to get too much into here since we all kind of know them. Um, obviously the first two are very relatable, right? That when the fact that you're able to build an app chain that gives you a much higher degree of customizability than you would get on something like an EVM shared environment. Um, that customizability ultimately can lead to a better UX, right? For, for the end user, since you're able to modify things at the lower chain level that you are, otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Um, there's a lot of examples here within Polkadot and, and Cosmos. Um, uh, I mean, Osmosis is a good example where they've kind of uh, modified a bunch of things, right? Like uh, native liquid staking, you can pay for gas in any token. They have built in like wallet and bridge functionality, which ultimately all these kind of changes and optimizations make the protocol just more competitive in, in the landscape. And then this last point is around kind of decentralization and token utility, right? A good example here is DYDX, that they went from ETH mainnet to Starkware and ultimately to their own app chain on Cosmos because they wanted, you know, they wanted the sovereignty, they wanted decentralization since Starkware and these L2s are highly centralized and they just wanted to have kind of their own environment to build in. And this point on token utility is also interesting since the underlying app chain token just tends to accrue more utility over time since you use it for like for gas payments, for fees, uh, for security, for governance. Um, so uh, builders are kind of attracted by that prospect, right? Um, but yeah, obviously with, with app chains uh, come many challenges and these were like, this was the problem that we really wanted to find out. Are there any significant problems to solve within the app chain space and what's holding back the space from even more exponential growth than we're facing? So I would say that the main kind of problem that we see with the app chain narrative right now and the app chain landscape is this infrastructure responsibility that teams have to take on, right? When you deploy on something like Moonbeam, you have all this great tooling already readily available for developers, right? You have things like Etherscan, Chainlink, the graph, 
you have multi-sig wallets, you have RPC endpoints, you have this great environment for developers to build in. But when you build your own chain, you know, this takes like a lot of time and you take the responsibility of putting all those components in place. And we can speak to firsthand to this fact, right? It's taken like over two years to build the, the ecosystem that's live, that, that's live on Moonbeam today. So it just really takes a tremendous amount of time, energy, and resources to put all of this ecosystem in place for, for builders. So I would say this is probably like the biggest friction point that we see with, with building app chains. There's also this point on weak and inefficient security, right? Where outside of Polkadot, at least, a lot of app chain offerings, you know, security is a problem, right? It's not easy to bootstrap a validator set. It's expensive. Um, and there's also this point on inefficiency, right? Where you're you're kind of paying for a full validator's worth of, of blockchain security where your blocks might not be like full at the beginning. So there's this like capital inefficiency point here where you could be using those resources elsewhere uh, kind of as opportunity cost to, to develop the protocol. Um, and then the last two points are, are very relatable to each other. You know, all these processes are very manual. They're very off chain, um, which ultimately just affect the time to market, right? Uh, putting all those components in place Current means that currently, you know, it takes months, uh, potentially years to deploy a fully operational app chain. With some of the teams that we spoke on different ecosystems, you know, some of them took like over a year to build out their own bridge because um, they needed connections to like ETH mainnet and external facing L1s. So all these things are, are really not trivial and they take time away from developers from actually developing the application itself, which is what they want to do to begin with. Yeah, so moving on to Tansy. So Tansy is really a protocol that's designed to address all of those challenges that I just mentioned. And what we're really envisioning is some is a protocol that provides kind of all the, the benefits and the power of having like app chains and its functionalities combined with the ease of implementation of a smart contract. And the reason we're kind of calling it a container chain protocol is because it's similar to it's kind of analogous to Kubernetes and Docker, where you have these kind of Docker containers that are being orchestrated. I would say that Tansy itself is kind of an orchestration protocol that's providing all the necessary services and components to run app chains in a reliable environment without compromising on security and decentralization, where I think Polkadot is, is very well built for. And in order to do that, we're going to be providing a set of tools, right? Like infrastructure management, so like block production as a service, data retrievability as a service, uh, built-in connectivity and cross-chain communication with other chains through XCM, um, accessibility and, and a lot of like tooling around managing a chain, right? Um, and kind of all of these tools are going to ultimately make up this environment to deploy app chains. I would say above all else, you know, our ultimate objective is to dramatically reduce the time to market for developers to deploy app chains um, at a fraction of the cost. Um, so this is really the objective to try to accelerate uh, adoption as much as possible. Here you can kind of take a look at how the architecture works. Um, Tansy itself will be a parachain, just like something like Moonbeam is. Um, the, the collator set of Tansy, it's actually going to be shared. So there's going to be a collator set on Tansy that produces blocks on behalf of, of these container chains that are deploying through Tansy. And uh, there's going to be this other type of node called data preservers, which are going to be basically in charge of keeping track of the state of each container chain so that the state transitions can be executed properly by these collators. They're going to be rotating in and out to produce blocks on behalf of the container chains. So that's kind of how it looks like. And they're going to be under the hood. They're just going to be parachains or para threads. Um, and here we, I tried to kind of summarize what, what the main responsibilities developers currently have to incur when they're building a, a parachain or an app chain. You know, there's the application logic itself, the, the, the logic of the chain, which is kind of the, the substrate runtime. And then there's these lower level responsibilities like the key integrations and the security that, that we just discussed, right? Tansy really aims to abstract away the, the key integrations and the security uh, along with the Polkadot relay chain so that developers can only focus on the application layer itself or the substrate runtime. And uh, in case they don't want to customize, you know, there's such a runtime with different palettes, we're planning on providing these pre-compiled templates, right? So that if a developer wants to launch like an EVM template, uh, essentially like an own instance of, of their own Moonbeam, kind of like their own sovereign EVM environment, they're going to be able to do so without having to customize the substrate runtime. So it's really just providing developers with options with what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the competitive landscape, I don't know how good I am on time, by the way, just, just let me know. Um, yeah, in terms of the competitive landscape, you know, we've taken a lot, uh, we've taken a look at a lot of competitors. As I mentioned before, you know, there's a lot of new uh, players entering the space. I would say that Polkadot and Cosmos, you know, are kind of the OGs, you know, they started this five, six years ago. The main obstacle we see with these two ecosystems is that 
the the setup time and the effort required to to launch app chain successfully is significant right so for a lot of teams this effort and capital required is prohibitive um, with Polkadot and Cosmos, obviously the, the main difference is the shared security model, but there's still a lot of friction points. Um, with Avalanche and Polygon, you know, these are newer players and it's arguably easier to get started, but we see some kind of flaws in the architecture when you compare it to Polkadot. With Avalanche subnets, you know, it's, it's pretty expensive to set up like a diversified validator set. So from the teams that we've spoken to, you know, to have like a large validator set, you have to pay close to like $5,000 per validator. So I think this is why by default, you know, most subnets end up having as little as like five to seven validators, which is really not good for security. The interoperability is also not the same, right? They don't have XCM, they have uh, warp messaging. Uh, so, I mean, for security, this is also not ideal because when you connect two subnets, you inherit the weaker security of whichever subnet has less validators. With Polygon Supernets, you know, it's really a different model. You know, it's kind of a permissioned system, right? Where you have to apply on their website, they need to accept you. You need to sign like service level agreements with them in the background. They're recruiting all of these infrastructure components on behalf of the team, but it's all like manual labor, right? So this in turn drives up the cost a lot. It takes hundreds of thousands of dollars to deploy months at a time. You know, it takes like four months to deploy a supernet. Um, so it's really not ideal with Tansy. We're really, we see a very strategic positioning within the app chain space where we want to make it a permissionless and automated protocol that leverages the Polkadot architecture, which is innate, like the Polkadot architecture, architecture enables this kind of system, right? Where if teams don't want to speak to our team to deploy the app chain, they don't have to, right? They can uh, benefit from the shared security of mo model of Polkadot. They can deploy in an automated way and Polkadot kind of enables this cloud-like experience, which in turn can reduce the time to market and, and increase the cost of efficiency sub uh, substantially. So I, I see a very unique opportunity for, for Tansy to be able to leverage Polkadot's architecture and have a competitive advantage as it relates to app chain infrastructure offerings. And, you know, this is uh, related to Dotsama. I think, I mean, obviously we're big believers in Polkadot. This is why we're doubling down. And, and we, we think that Polkadot has a lot going for the ecosystem. There's a lot of developer engagement. Uh, but I think, you know, we want to be able to take all the good things from the architecture that Polkadot has built and improve on the developer experience, right? There's a lot of developer friction right now involved with, you know, the auction process, the crowd loan, then after, you know, maintaining the chain, runtime upgrades, uh, putting all the tools in place. Um, so we want to make it a lot simpler for the developer to build, uh, which kind of by offering a path of least resistance for developers, that tends to lead to, to adoption, right? Because they want to do the easiest thing. And then combining that with things like excellent developer support, developer relations, uh, proper marketing, um, business development to actually attract teams to the ecosystem. So I think by, com com by combining all of these components that have served well uh, on Moonbeam to drive growth, you know, I think we can apply a similar formula to, to drive adoption for, for, Polkadot, um, for the Polkadot ecosystem. And I do think that Polkadot has a lot going for it. And I, I see a very, I feel a very strong sense of urgency because Polkadot is ahead in terms of the architecture. You see these competitors are converging towards what Polkadot has already built, right? Like Cosmos with replicated security, Binance sidechain, all architectures are kind of evolving towards what Polkadot already has. But this is why I feel a strong sense of urgency because we need to deliver and actually capitalize on what Polkadot has built. So I, I feel like we have this responsibility to bring Polkadot to the forefront as it relates to Web3. Um, yeah, we can skip this. It's quite repetitive. I mean, we've already we've already gone through this. Uh, so in terms of the Tansy team, you know, I'm I'm helping build the protocol along with Gorka and Kathy, who have been also core members of the Moonbeam uh, protocol. Uh, Gorka as VP of engineering, Kathy as head of marketing. You know, they're they're both uh, very competent and talented people, and we're going to be closely advised by a lot of the people that helped uh, bring Moonbeam to life. So from a team perspective, um, yeah, I think it's it's a strong team that that can execute. And yeah, just as kind of like the, the last comments, I would say, you know, we're, we're launching an ecosystem pioneers program for really for any teams that are interested in getting in touch, even if you don't want to build a container chain, just to engage, reach out to me on Telegram. I'm literally online 24 um, seven. You can apply here. The, the pioneers program is really meant to help support early teams. A lot of the early teams that engage with us are going to are going to get a lot of yeah, they're going to get a lot of priority in terms of hands on support, uh, marketing, visibility, technical support. Or, uh, yeah. So if anyone wants to engage, I would encourage them to do so. Uh, th thanks a lot for, for letting me speak today. It's, it's been a pleasure. We do have just a couple quick questions. Um, first and foremost, people are asking, will there be a crowd loan? 
Yeah, I mean, that's TBD. Uh, I think it's it's not unlikely that we'll have a crowd loan. I think crowd loans are excellent for, for distribution and for bootstrapping community. So that is definitely something we're considering. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, will the chains build, built in with uh, have automatic sub scan support or is that going to be routed through? Yeah, that's a good question. So obviously the second component in our integrations, you know, the protocol itself is quite challenging to build, right? So we're not going to we're not going to build these solutions like the wallets, the explorers, the indexers. We're not going to build those ourselves. So we're currently in conversations with most of the main providers on Polkadot, like Subscan, Nova Wallet, uh, Sub Wallet, Talisman, Sub Squid, Sub Query. So the idea would be to kind of, you know, what we're trying to discuss with them is automating and standardizing that integration process as much as possible, so that the UI, you know, the developer flow would look like okay. I want to pick a, uh, an EVM template, and then you would go through a menu that, okay, I need a Nova wallet for my mo mobile wallet. I need subscan. Uh, you pick from like kind of a menu. And then when you launch the chain, we want to try to automate and standardize that integration process as much as possible so that you don't even have to interact with those teams, right? And you kind of abstract the way that like off onboarding back and forth negotiation with the provider. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're definitely kind of in conversations and we're going to be cl working closely with those teams.